It's the week of January 18th, 2022. My name is Josh. And I am Rosie. Welcome to your Ruth Fisher News. We know that Arizona, and particularly the West Valley, is a fast-growing area. There are many ways that we see that growth. Arizona was America's fifth highest growth state in 2021 per U-Haul's Growth Index transactional data. The moving equipment rental company calculates growth states by comparing how many one-way U-Haul trucks enter state versus leaving it, according to a press release. Arizona saw a 6% increase in one-way trucks coming into the state compared to 2020. State departures in one-way U-Haul trucks rose by just 4%, according to the release. Jesse Ashtown, U-Haul Company of Northwest Phoenix president, said in a release, the homes are bigger and there's more available land. Arizona is also known for its great weather and mild winters, stunning landscapes, an abundance of jobs, and a decent cost of living. We have really become a magnet for people. Texas, Florida, Tennessee, and South Carolina were the top four growth states of the year, according to the release. California, Illinois, and Pennsylvania were the bottom three. Now Scientists at Virginia Tech made a recent discovery about a bug. It's not just any bug, though. It's a millipede. The word millipede translates to 1,000 feet. But until recently, the world record-holding millipede had 758 feet. That all changed, though, last year when scientists discovered a new species of millipede, deep in an abandoned Australian mining hole. The biggest millipede that they ever found had more than 1,300 legs. That's a lot of legs. Making it the first true millipede ever discovered alive. We say alive because at almost the same time, a different team of scientists discovered the fossilized remains of what is believed to be the biggest arthropod ever to live. The fossil remains show a millipede that would have been over 9 feet long and estimated to weigh about 10, 110 pounds. Can you imagine living near bugs that could literally step on you? Now let's go over to Mr. Dobesh with the weekly update. Uh, happy new week, Ruth Fisher Colts. Um, so new week, uh, new start to it. So again, reminder, wear masks, use hand sanitizer. If you're not feeling well, please stay home. Uh, highly recommend wearing a mask while you're on campus or on other kids if you can't social distance. Uh, if you're sick, talk to your parents, make sure you're staying home. Um, if you have a pending COVID test out there, yes, please stay home until you get those results back. Again, trying to stop the spread of COVID on campus, keep our doors open and classrooms uh, open for learning. So uh, please help us out with that. Um, congratulations, boys basketball for varsity team went down to Arlington last weekend and won the Arlington tournament going undefeated again. So they finally finished their season uh, completely undefeated. Um, and good luck girls basketball and boys flag football teams are starting competition here soon. So teams are set. Uh, work hard and make sure you're using sportsmanship and represent our teams well in our school. Uh, with that, make it a great week and we will see you guys all around campus. Thank you, Mr. Dovish. Let's go over to Lorena with sports. Welcome to sports, my name is Lorena. The Arizona Cardinals lost to the Seattle Seahawks in the last game of the season to finish 11-6. They played the LA Rams last night on the road. We will fill you in on how the game went next week. One cool fact about the game, it was the first NFL playoff game ever to be held on a Monday night. The Arizona Coyotes continue to struggle losing to the Nashville Predators by a score of 4-2. The Suns are continuing to play well this month so far. At the time of filming, they only had one loss in January, and that was to Miami Heat. The record is 30 and nine. So far this season, and still right near the top spot of the Western Conference. That is all for today. See you next time on Sports News. Thanks, Lorena. Let's go over to Shaylin and Dora with entertainment news. Welcome back to Entertainment News. I'm Dora. And I am Shaylin. The Arizona Balloon Classic will return to Goodyear from Friday, January 28th to Sunday, January 30th. This 11th annual outdoor event attracts visitors from around the val valley 
as it is one of the only shows of its kind in Arizona. Additional activities are held throughout the weekend for the whole family. I know everybody's heard of a hot air balloon, but not everyone has actually experienced a hot air balloon either. Standing next to one or riding one, said Tim Matajkowicz, founder of Arizona Balloon Classics. The gates will open at Goodyear Ballpark from 4 to 8 p.m. Friday, January 28th, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday, January 29th, and 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Sunday, January 30th, the 2022 Festival of Special Matajkowicz as he said, last year's event had a smaller crowd turnout and less hot air balloons due to the pandemic. But he's looking forward to having lots of balloons out there this year. See you next time on Entertainment, Entertainment News. News. Bye. Thanks, guys. Let's go over to Cameron and Hope with Fun Fact Trivia. Yeah. Welcome to Fun Fact Trivia. My name is Cameron. And I'm Hope. Did you know that today, January 18th, is National Michigan Day? National Michigan Day recognizes the Great Lake State, surrounded by four of the five Great Lakes. Michigan has more shoreline than any of the contiguous 48 states. Of the 50 states, only Alaska has more. First explored by the French, the area became a U.S. territory in 1783, flush with Iron and copper. Michigan would become a center of interterrestrial activity. It also, it is also the only state made with two Palencias. Your question today is: What year did the first Ford car roll off the assembly line in Detroit? A. 1888. B. 1898. C. 1908. You have 10 seconds to make your decision. If you said C, 1908, you are correct. The first model T Ford car was produced in 1908. Fun fact, Michigan is also home to the world's only floating post office. It is the only boat in the world that delivers mail to ships that are still traveling. It has been doing so far over 125 years. See you next time. See you next week on Fun Fact Trivia. Thanks girls, let's go back to Shailen and Dora with the word of the week. Hello, welcome to Joke of the Week. My name is Dora. And I am Shaylin. Okay, Shaylin, what's your joke? Why did the tomato blush? I don't know, why did the tomato blush? <laughs> because it's all the salad dressing. Ha ha ha, great joke. Shout out to Colton Hill for this joke. If you have a joke and would like to tell it on the news, please go to smusd.me slash news, and we would love to have you. See you next time on Joke of the Week. Bye. Thanks, girls. Here's Hope with Science Time. <laughs> Welcome to Science Time. My name is Hope. Scientists in Israel have taught goldfish an unusual way to reach a target by driving a small robotic car on dry land. The experiment was designed to test whether the goldfish could find their way in conditions very different from their natural living conditions. To test the goldfish, the researchers created a special robotic car that could drive forward, backward, and from side to side. The scientists called the car a fish-operated vehicle, FOV for short. A goldfish was placed inside a water tank on the FOV. Using a special system, the car tracked where the goldfish was and what direction it was swimming. The FOV would then automatically move in the same direction. The scientists worked with the six different goldfish. They tested them by placing the car in a small room with a pink target on one side. The fish were rewarded with a food pellet when the car touched the target. At first, it took the fish about a half, hour, half an hour to drive to the target. But by the end of the experiment, they were able to complete the same challenge in less than a minute. See you next week with more Science Time. Thanks, Hope. Here's Dora one more time with This Week in History. Hello, and welcome to This Week in History. I'm Dora. On January 18, 7078, the English explorer Captain James Cook became the first European to travel to the Hawaiian Islands. When he sails past the islands of Oh, Wahoo. <laughs> Two days later, he landed at Waimea 
on the island of Kauai and named the island group the Sandwich Island in honor of John Montagu, who was the Earl of Sandwich and and one of his patrons. Cook and his crew were welcomed by the Hawaiians who were fascinated by the Europeans' ships and their use of iron. The ships then made a brief stop at Niihau and headed north to look for the western end of Northwest Passage from the North Atlantic to the Pacific. Almost one year later, Cook Cook's two ships returned to the Hawaiian Islands and found a safe harbor in the in the Hawaii, in Hawaiian's Kealaku Bay. Shortly after, flights broke out, killing most of the European explorers. Years later, the fighting was resolved, and the visitors were welcomed again. Were welcome once again. See you later on this week in history. Thanks, Dora. Here's Cameron with Word of the Week. Welcome to Word of the Week. My name is Cameron. This week, this week's word is solely. Soli is a verb and it means to soil or tarnish. Here's, Here's how you can use it in a sentence. The angry customer posted a bad review online to solely the reputation of the restaurant. See you next time on Word of the Week. Thanks, Cameron. That is all for this episode of Ruth Fisher News. See you next week. Go, Go on!